The following story has been brought to you by storiestoinspire.org. I once had to speak to a very rowdy group of boys in, during the summer months. I mean, rowdy boys are challenging enough. Summer months is challenging enough. But it was like smacking in the afternoon, and you know, you could do it, just do it. I had no idea how I'm going to get these boys' attention. They were very, you know, you know char- emotionally charged bunch of boys. And I do what I always do. Whenever I speak, I davened. Bershom gave me das, at the And let me tell you what the Bershom gave me. This idea. I told them, boys, imagine if all of a sudden, right after I finish speaking, there's a big announcement that because you boys are so great, we're taking you tomorrow on a trip to Eretz Yisrael. Now I'm talking about a few years ago when they still had the Concorde jet, few hours, you'll be there, we're going to spend the day in Eretz Yisrael. So right away all the boys started murmuring, ah, this is a hoax, call a break, blah, 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 blah. But guess what? The next day, sure enough, 12 o'clock noon, like they promised, the jet lands on the lawn of your camp. And you will jump into the plane as quick as you can. And all of a sudden, they're about to take off, and the pilot says, I, I must apologize. This never happened in my career. I've been flying 40 years. I forgot to refuel. I can't go to Eretz Israel, but don't worry. I already called the dispatcher. They're going to bring with a truck. They're going to refuel us right here. Within an hour, we should be in the air. Please don't get off the plane because I want to be able to you know, cut my lost time. Within an hour, we should be in the air. And here you are, boys. You're basically... On the house arrest, you're stuck in this jet. You can't go anywhere. What are you going to be thinking that hour? And I let the question penetrate. I said, you know what I would be thinking? This jet is amazing. It must be millions of dollars, technology, you know, precision, you know, true a work of art. It could fly to Eric in a few hours. But if there's no fuel, you're not going anywhere. Now, I don't know how much fuel costs, but it's, I'm sure it's a, a, a slight fraction of the cost of the jet. Look at the lesson. You could have a potential. You could be living in a world of potential. You could reach the, the, the heights of the sky. A person could reach such great heights. But without that fuel, and that's the tefillah, we're not going anywhere. Because the fuel is the unsung hero. No one knows where it is, how it looks, what it costs. You don't even see it. But everything in the plane, everything of a, a person's ascent upward is tefillah. And that is my message. This is the success that we so desperately need. This is the way we become that ish matzliach that we so much want to be. We have to realize that the Bershom program, the world, we are what we daven. Let me just close with a story. Yitzhak Zilberstein said this story, it happened with him, actually. He once got a message from Chaim Kanievsky. He didn't get a phone, because Chaim doesn't have a phone, but he had a message from Chaim wants to speak to him, to come down as soon as possible. So of course he went to Chaim's house. Chaim said, you know, I had a very interesting shaila a while ago. A boy, Bnei Brak, a young child, was diagnosed with the dreaded illness and the doctor basically said he has to go undergo the various treatments, he's going to lose his hair. It would be a very traumatic experience if suddenly he lost his hair after the treatment. The parents just tell him about the eventuality, that he's going to go to the treatment, he'll lose his hair. But he'll be okay, hopefully he'll survive, but you have to break it in slowly. So the parents took this child and they sat him down and they explained to him in detail what's going to be. And he's going to lose his hair. And the boy got very emotional and said, we went to the corner and started davening, talking to Hashem. Must have been a mature child. So I'm, I'm, I'm sick. No, that's your rotsin. Lose my hair, that's your rotsin. But how am I going to go without my payas? How could a Yiddish boy be without his payas? So I need my payas. Whatever you do is what, what, Bershom, you know what you're doing, but please keep my payas. And the parents heard this and they, they, they just tore their hearts apart. Look how, you know, how sincere he is. But, but it's, it's, it's not real. It's not realistic. 
to hear falls out, the pace falls out. And they came to Rabbi Chaim and said, listen, this is what happened. Should we tell him the truth? It might be more painful, but maybe it's worse if he'll lose his pace. So Rabbi Chaim said, I told him, wait a second. If he davened, why don't you believe in his tefillah? And Rabbi Chaim finished his story and says, bring the boy in. And a boy walked in without hair on his head, but he still had payas. That's that mata oiz, biyad kol adam. That's that unbelievable, unlimited power. That's the fuel of Yiddishkeit, not just of that child. That's the secret of why we're here today. That's the secret why we have a Kla Yisrael today. Because all the uh, the Avais and the Mois were Akarais. And it was only that tefillah. Is the belief in that tefillah. But I can humbly suggest, starting tonight, just an investment of three, se- three seconds, not more. Before we start any tefillah, any Shman Esra, think about these words. This is my most important hishtadlus. That gives meaning to every davening. And the Rebbein Shalom, who Shmeya Tfilas Kol Peh, will hear out Tfilas, and give us the brachas we need, will be zayich to be that Ishma Tzliach, and will be zayich to Gmachsim Atoiva, Lan Ruchal Yisrael, Amen Amen. thank you. Enjoyed this story? Come again. Bring a friend. StoriesToInspire.org